This is part two of section 6.5. So yesterday we talked about rational exponents, and now we're going to solve exponential equations. So we're going to work on objective three here, but we need to make sure we have a good foundation in rational exponents in order to solve exponential equations. Okay, so the key to being able to solve an exponential equation is actually being able to rewrite both sides of your equation so that you have the same base on both sides. So let's take a look at number 19, for example. Now in number 19, I have an exponential equation here because I have an exponent um, that is a variable. So I have a variable in my exponent. This makes it an exponential equation. Now if I look at this though, the base is al already the same, so I don't have much work to do here. If I know that these are supposed to be equal, then I know that the exponents must also be equal. So 1 minus x has to equal 4. So if I subtract 1 here, I end up with x equaling negative 3. So that's a very basic problem. Now in number 20 though, notice how the bases on both sides are not the same. So you're going to rewrite both sides of the base the same. So I can take 9 and rewrite that as 3 squared. So this is 3 squared raised to the x minus 1 power. And on the other side, 3 cubed raised to the second power. Now it's really easy to make the mistake here of rewriting this incorrectly. When you distribute here, you should have 2 times x minus 1. And on the other side, 3 times 2. So you can equate the exponents after you find the same base. Just equate the exponents. So set the exponents equal to one another. The uh, biggest mistake that I see people make is here when they uh, don't distribute this correctly. So this is 2x minus 2 equaling 6. Add the 2, divide out the 2 then, and then you end up with x equaling 4. In number 21, this is technically not an exponential equation uh, because an exponential equation is one where the exponent is the variable. Here I have a base that's the variable. Now the reason why we're still doing these problems is because we think it's important for you to understand what you need to do in order to solve for x. Whenever you solve for x, even in this last, these last two examples, notice how you're really finding x to the first power, right? You can always rewrite that as x to the first power. So here, even though x is technically, I guess you could say by itself, it's not x to the first power. I want to make this x to the first power. So what I do for this is actually raise this to a reciprocal power of negative 4 thirds. So I'm going to take negative 4 thirds, which is the reciprocal of negative 3 fourths, right? That reciprocal just means that you're flipping. You don't change the sign at all. You keep the sign, so you're raising it to the reciprocal power, which is 4 thirds. Now, this becomes, when I multiply that, x to the first power. That's why I want to take the reciprocal. Anytime I multiply something by its reciprocal, so for example, 3 sevenths and 7 thirds, these end up canceling, leaving me with just 1. So it ends up giving me x to the first power. Now on the right hand side, I have 8 raised to the negative 4 thirds power. Now this is why it relates to rational exponents, because now we have to evaluate this, which is something we can do without a calculator. So we take 8 and we rewrite that as 2 to the third power. So this is 2 to the third power raised to the negative 4 thirds power. So I have to now evaluate this side. Um, all that this negative is going to do, I guess you could distribute it first, right? That would cancel out the 3's. You have 2 to the negative 4th power. All that that negative is going to do, though, is move that to the de denominator. So you end up with 1 over 16. Okay, so notice that there are no negative numbers here. Um, so make sure that you're not confusing that with a negative sign, but you get 1 16. Okay, let's do a few more, because I know that this is a little confusing for people at first. Let's take number 22. Now, number 22 is also not an exponential equation, but it does involve exponents, so we're going to solve it um, using our, exponential, our exponent rules. Now, 1 over x to the 1 half. I want to rewrite this, because I never want to have x in the denominator. Okay? I want to rewrite that as x to the negative 1 half. So I can apply the rule that if x to the negative 1 half is equal to 1 over x to the 1 half, and if I'm given this, I can rewrite that as this. Okay, so I'm just using the backwards logic there. Now, I have that equal to 3. Since I don't have x to the first power, I'm going to raise this to the negative 2 over 1. So the reciprocal power here would be negative 2 on both sides. Now, this is going to cancel here, leaving me with x to the first equaling 3 to the negative second power. So x equals... 1 over 3 squared, or 1 ninth. In 23, here we do have an exponential equation, because if you can see here, if I erase that, 
the uh, variable is in the exponent. So when I rewrite this, I want to take both sides and rewrite them using the same base. Now the base here is going to be a 2. It's sometimes hard to see this when it's a fraction, but you can rewrite 1 half, the same idea that we just talked about right here, you can rewrite 1 half as 2 to the negative first power. So we have 2 to the negative first power raised to the x power is equal to 2 to the third power. So I'm just taking a base and rewriting it with equivalent bases on both sides. So now I have, if I equate the exponents, make sure you multiply here, you get negative x equaling 3, so x we equal negative 3. In problem 24, this is an exponential equation, the exponent is in the, uh, or the variable is an exponent, so um, here we're going to rewrite both sides of your base, so we have 3 raised to the x squared minus 3x equaling 3 raised to the fourth power. So now that I have the same base, I can equate exponents, so this should equal this. So x squared minus 3x should equal 4. And now I actually just have a quadratic, so if I uh, subtract that 4 over, I can try to factor this. This is going to be x minus 4 times x plus 1 equaling 0. So I get two unique solutions. x could equal 4, or x could equal negative 1. All right, let's work on number 25. In this problem here, um, the same base that I can rewrite both of these as is 2, so the base of 2. So I'm going to write that as 2 squared raised to the 2x squared plus 2x power equaling 2 to the third power. Now if I equate exponents, I have to make sure that I multiply here first. So this is 2 times 2x squared plus 2x and that should equal 3. So I have 4x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. This is something that's factorable, so I'd want you to factor this. Don't use the quadratic formula. A lot of you guys always want to use the quadratic formula, so always look to factor before you start that. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add up to 4. Those numbers are positive 6 and negative 2. So 4x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 3 should equal 0, so I'm just splitting the middle term here. Factor out the 2x, and I'm left with 2x plus 3. Subtract, or I mean, I'll factor out a negative 1 here, so you're left with 2x plus 3. The parentheses are the same. I keep going. I have 2x minus 1 and 2x plus 3 as my factors here, which means x equals 1 half or negative 3 halves. Okay, so there's two solutions there as well. And number 26, we're going to rewrite these using the same base. Now you could write this as 2 to the third power, um, and this also is a power of 2, but I wouldn't do that here just because you see the 8 already. Don't make more work for yourself. This is 8 raised to the x minus 2 equaling 8 raised to the 1 half. Remember in yesterday's video we talked about how you can rewrite that radical using a rational exponent, so that's equivalent to 8 to the 1 half power. And now after that we just equate our exponents here, these two should be equal, so x minus 2 equals 1 half, add the 2 over, so x is equal to 2 and a half, or 5 halves. And finally, in problem 27, um, I want to rewrite this using a base of 4, because I can rewrite 64 as a base of 4. You could also rewrite that as a base of 2, it really won't make a difference here, um, but uh, we're going to keep that 4. I just want to make it a little bit easier on myself. Now, 1 over 64 is the same as 1 over 4 cubed. If I want to bring that back to the numerator, that would be equivalent to 4 to the negative third. Okay, so 1 over 64 is 4 to the negative third power, so x plus 1 should equal negative 3, which means x equals negative 4. All right, that's the end of the lesson. Um, you will definitely get more practice. I know I didn't leave any of these um, for you to do on your own, but I did think it was important to do each one with you because I think they can be pretty tough. Um, go back and replay something if it's kind of confusing to you because the exponent part of this is super important. Um, just to recap, the problems that were not technically exponential equations were 21 uh, and uh, 22, and that's only because the, the exponent was not a variable. So if our vari variable appears in the exponent like it did on all the other problems, then we call those exponential equations. 
We're still using, though, the idea of rational exponents, which is why we're teaching you it in this section. But the idea here is instead is to get x to the first power. So you have to raise it to the reciprocal power. So off to the side here, let me just explain something real quick. If you had x to the negative 2 thirds power equals some number over here, in order to get x to the first power, that's your goal, right? You want to raise this to the reciprocal power, which is going to be negative 3 halves. So you'd have to do that on both sides. You always do one side of the equation, what you do under the other. So now this is going to give me x to the first power equaling that number raised to the negative 3 halves. All right? That's the general idea. Um, otherwise, your bases need to be the same on both sides in order to be able to equate your exponents. If they are not equal bases, then you cannot set the base, uh, the exponents equal to each other. All right? Okay, I think that's enough of my rambling. That's the end of the lesson. I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.